So welcome back to week 4 lectures. So we have been discussing about the results section as to how you can put together your results section for a manuscript or a thesis and we have been discussing about how do you generate the figures, what are the ways by which you should make the schematics figures and how they are helpful in explaining your results. So in continuation of the discussion in this lecture we are going to look at some of the guidelines for how to make very good figures. Okay? It could be bar diagrams, it could be figures, it could be schematics. So, you are going to look into some of those issues. Again as the uh, title of the course says, these are all introduction. So, it does not really get into every um, point that needs to be addressed, but it gives you overall uh, you know uh, guidelines as to what are the points that you should look at and you have to appreciate that you have to give a lot more thoughts when you prepare images, figures and schematics. So, it is just an introduction to this topic. So, as shown here in this particular you know slide which again I obtained from the publisher Springer, um, the figures and tables what you call as display items are often the quickest way to communicate large amount of complex information that you would be that would be complicated otherwise to explain in the text right. So, that is what we are continuing to discuss. So, we are going to look at you know how do you make images, how do you make data plots and so on. So, for you know when you make images be sure to include scale bars. So, you may have for example taken a microscopic image of a cell or tissue or you know a part of the wing of a butterfly whatever it is, but you need to give a scale bar saying that what is the magnification right. So, that is very very important this is one such data point that you have to keep in mind. Consider labeling important items. So, you, because you are looking at um, a small segment of a larger data otherwise you would have understood, but you have zoomed in to such a high magnification that you do not know what it is or you want reader to look at a particular you know uh, segment of the image. So, you want to give an image you know label that with an arrow or asterisk or something you know so therefore, reader can appreciate what you want to say. Indicate the meaning of different colors and symbols used right. This statement is made assuming that the colors and symbols you used has got some meaning. So, that is something that we will come back a little later you know. So, you have for example, a color image wherein a cell is you know stained using different fluorochrome which gives you red, green and blue and so on. Now, so each one what does it mean each color what does it mean. So, you have to identify that with a label. So, you want to say the red means mitochondria. So, you want to write mitochondria in red color therefore, it, it convey the red signal that you find in that image is mitochondria or if it is a particular protein that you have stained with a red color dye then you want to use that name and blue meaning say nuclei or whatever it is. So, you need to identify them it is important and if you have used some symbol for example, you have an you know high magnified view of a cell and there are some say mitochondria some are normal looking some are abnormal looking. So, you want to put an asterisk next to the abnormal looking mitochondria and then write in the legend that the asterisk indicate an abnormal mitochondria with regard to the size shape or how does it look like and so on. So, therefore, you have to you know indicate the meaning of the colors and symbols in the figure legend we will we'll see little later. For data plots when you talk about bar diagram and others be sure to label all the axes you have y axis you have x axis you have to say what the value mean there you know it could be time it could be temperature it could be protein level and so on, but you have to ex exactly explain as to what it mean. Specify units for quantities for example, you have given some number 20, 40, 60, 80 what does that mean right is it milligram per some volume or a molar T or fold change what is that you have to say that. Label all curves and data sets in your bar diagram or in a, in a line diagram you have multiple lines you know what each line indicate that needs to be explained in the figure. Use legible font size you know you may have a big bar diagram, but you are you know whatever values or labels that you are adding it is too small that when it is printed you cannot even read it right. So, that becomes difficult you know to convey what information you want to convey 
therefore it should be legible. It should not be too big either. So, it has to have some relation that you need to know and what size I should give and so on. So, there are a large number of reading materials available for how to make figures and so on. So, one I am showing here is the figure instruction for accepted manuscript. This is from a journal called Journal of Clinical Investigation. Likewise, most of the publishers have detailed uh, instruction. So, you may want to go and consult a journal that publishes more of your kind of work. So, that would tell you how to make figures for you know your kind of work. So, I am just giving you one such example. So, what I am going to do is to give examples from this journal. But I am also given you an another link at the bottom which from the science magazine that also gives you more information for more multidisciplinary area as to how to make figures and uh, schematics and so on. So, I am going to give you some examples here um, some from some links right. So, you can see use of same font type and size for figures. You can see the figure on the top ok. It is the figure is almost identical except that the how they are labeled is what we are going to look into. The one on the top identified by the red cross mark is that this is not good. You can see that you know the the, the label that are used in bold font IL 23 for example, you cannot even differentiate them the font is so horrible. And then again in the in the in the scattered plot on the right side you have font that are not the professional font you know you cannot you know it is a kind of a font that you know more in, in a banner and things like people use and you cannot even read them all that are identified by for example, the asterisk the red asterisk you cannot read. So, you on the left side you have such a large font size on the right you have such a small font size both are belonging to the same figure group. So, it is not good. So, that is what corrected the one panel that is shown below identified by the green tick mark is that now all fonts are more or less similar size and you are able to read them they are legible therefore, they are better. So, this is again an example as to how you can make good figures and how you make labels. I am going to show you few more examples use of the same font type and size for figures this is what it is. Now, you can see that this is a group figure you know A B and you can see that the one that are identified by asterisk red asterisk you can see that 24 let us see that uh, one on the top right. It says 24 k d a right and there is an asterisk there if you can guess why that is because that is not correct way because after 24 you have to give a space because you know kilo dalton 24 there it has to be a break and space should be there. So, these are minute things but people miss out and again if your figure has got figure A and figure B, figure A is with capital letter, figure B is identified by small letter B. You can see that again it does not really make sense, it should be you know as per the journal it should be either small letter or capital letter. And then again you can see that in each of the label for the different proteins that are identified T, A, K, T or uh, you know NF, kappa, B and so on. Here the Greek letter kappa, alpha all these things are in a font that are very different from the rest of the font. So, it is it is not correct right and for example, now how would you correct it this is a corrected figure. So, you can see now 24 k d a you have a gap in between all these you know the labels have been changed therefore, it is better. Now, let us look into the figure on the right side now. Now, you can see that again you see that uh, in the value on the y axis for the line diagram you have 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now, that is not correct. You have to have them as 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that is the best way to show them. And second, it says OD values in bracket absorbance at force 92 nanometer. Now, you will find before the bracket there is no space, after 492 nanometer there is no space, right. You have to introduce the space, and that has been corrected here now. You can see that this is how it is given. Now, you go on the right side now control group now each line you know it is is difficult to even decipher because the symbols are not very legible and each line you are saying what it is. You can see here 0 0.5 micromole right this micro you are reading it because it is not micro it is u it is a common mistake people make. So, it has to be the correct symbol now you can see that even appreciate it is 0 0.5 and then there is a space and then micromolars right. 
So you have to have, you know, uh, atten you have to give a lot of attention when you are making figures as to that you make them in accurate way. Now we are coming back to the uh, figure that is given on the right side lower uh, corner and you can see the time which says month, right? And then, and then you have all the data points that are very, very thin that you cannot read. Now these are better. Now for example, there are lines you cannot read. Now you have lines that are more legible and you have said that time it is months because it is 20, 40, 60, 80. It goes in plural, therefore it should be said in months. So it really talks about the survival of certain organisms. That is what this plot says. And, and, and it now you can understand the legend or uh, even each one of the data points, uh, lines what they mean. It looks much, much better as compared to the previous one. Now you will look into some of those uh, examples. These examples are not so good examples. In fact, if you go to the site that is given below, these are uh, sites wherein they have looked into some of the research publications. Some of them even pub are published in very reputed journal, but that they show it as a bad example, right, for how to make figures. But that helps you to understand why well, you should not make figures, right. So this is a figure that appeared in the paper in journal Cell, considered to be one of the reputed journal, which talks about distribution of, you know, some TFBS region, right, some sites, let us not worry about it, and some sequences that are present in, uh, located in various parts of the genome, let us not worry what it is. But what is the problem with this figure? The figure is that when you have this data point, there is no need for putting this pie chart in a two dimensional or three dimensional way, right. So, the 3D uh, really, really is not required here, a 2D pie chart in black and white could have really helped you to understand better. The reason is now in a 3D, the, 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 for example, even for the group that is shown on the left side, what is called novel 24 percent, it has got two different shades of the color just to, you know, appreciate the 3D effect, you know, but it may mean, you know, there is a three different, uh, two different value there, you know, for a reader who is not trying to it. And second, you know, the region that is present at the back. So, how do you bring 3D effect? Because even if there is a road, you are looking at it in a 3D aspect, then the, the, the road that is near to you, that segment of the road is much wider as compared to the segment at the back. So, that will be much narrower as compared to that. So, you give a 3D effect. Here also the pie, D, the pie chart, you have given a 3D effect such that the one that at the back, for example, 5 prime to known gene, 22 percent. You know, this is you know 22 percent is shown in a little narrow to give you the depth, right. That could be misleading because for you to look at it, it may look like smaller. So, it is not necessary here. So, you could have easily, you know, presented the figure in two dimensional way and simple, you know, pattern could have really helped it. So, that would help the reader to understand the difference. After all, what you are trying to say is the relative proportion of the segments of the genome where this particular site is present. So, a 2D would have helped much better. The other example is, now you can see that this is a kind of a line diagram, instead of plotting a simpler line diagram, again the authors have plotted a ribbon diagram, each ribbon now indicates a data point or trend of particular experimental group or whatever here is a population. Now what is difficult here is that you cannot really, because of the, again the depth that they are trying to show in this three dimensional plot. You cannot compare one line with the other. Now, you know, each of them look very, very similar. So, simple line diagram with each line having a different, for example, a dotted line or a continuous line or a different color would have made easier for the reader to understand the difference in the line, you know, between the data points. Again, this is one of the bad examples. Again, this looks so beautiful because these are all cylinders that are packed one against each other, the beautiful shadow and gives you a three dimensional view. But again, you know, it, it, as a reader, it is extremely difficult to compare one cylinder with the other, especially when you want to differentiate the height difference, right. The perspective that is 3D effect makes it difficult to compare the heights. For example, you consider um, in the 36, uh, 39, that is second last from the right side, if you see, you know, there are four cylinders in that particular bin and what is difficult is that can you compare the height of Q1 with Q3, although the Q3 looks taller, but because of the three dimensional depth that you have given, 
it looks taller but probably it is the same height so i cannot really appreciate that right so it could have been split into for example three different you know figures stacked one over the other and or a bar diagram one next to each other you know it could have made you know the comparison much much simpler if you have used a set two dimensional you know bar diagram so again these are all some of the issues that you need to really really look at it i am going to talk about even you know uh, at times we miss out this is a figure that i am just going to uh, what i am showing you is from the nature issue which talks about research centers in the country which are the centers that are publishing you know very good uh, papers and so on and they talk about india by numbers as to the number of you know pu publication that are coming from various cities and various uh, uh, institute that are located in the city and so on it's a very good way of saying things as to for example punjab university top ranked university and what is the publication and tfr mumbai what is the publication iic and, and so on so now if you look of it it looks so good but you know it has a problem i don't know how many of you are able to locate the problem the problem is this so when you are publishing any political map these are political map they are not geographical map basically it says the the whatever the map that is shown by the nature publication is a map the blue filled regions is considered to be indian territory right which is not accurate because it did not include a majority of the jammu and kashmir which the indian government in you know, as per our government as per our belief it is part of india but is occupied by other countries therefore when you publish any paper from india if you are using a political map you know you cannot just borrow any political map that is present in the the google you know you just search it and use it that is not accurate for example what is shown on the right side is a political map as given by the indian government this is from the ministry of external affairs if you go this is a political map which correctly displays the indian territory there are dispute area but the dispute for the other countries as far as the indian government is concerned this is the indian territory and that is what should be shown whenever you report any results that uses the map and you want to publish it in any journal so you have to use the correct official political map of india right so that you need to know that uh, you should not do any such mistake with regard to any country that you do so you have to go for that particular country and what is the correct you know uh, political map you need to make sure but you have a problem with that one can use always what is called a geographical map which really doesn't uh, identify the uh, territory based on the political feature it is mostly based on the geographical it is neutral so that you don't get into any trouble with regard to one party claiming uh, one and other party claiming something different so you have to be careful when you use maps as to what information you wish to convey and therefore which map is accurate for that kind of a information that you wish to convey so you have to be careful right so when you make figures you know there are a large number of important um, points that you need to consider right so what i am going to talk about now in a few slides is ethics in image processing for publication so because these are often digital images these days right so the digital images you have to process you may have to crop the image to show only a small segment or you may have to um, you know adjust the contrast to highlight the differences and so on so when you do that such kind of image processing there are certain guidelines which you need to follow right so that is what shown here and there are um, a large number of sites especially the journal sites when you go they give you all the guidelines one i am showing is for the nature publication so likewise you can go and do for uh, search for every journal that you wish to publish it's called as image integrity and standards right so we are going to look into some of those so ethics in image processing for publication so the one of the important element is that figures must maintain their original proportion when resizing an image make sure to change the height and width by the same percentage for example you have an image which may be a3 size image left to the original dimension but you cannot publish an a3 size image in a journal article or you cannot put that in your thesis it has to be probably one tenth of the size that you can publish or you can you want to put it in your thesis so how do you make it smaller so the relative uh, proportion of the journals in the overall the image can be you know made into smaller 
by 90 percent, 80 percent. When you do so, the height and width also should be of the same proportion. What is shown here is a picture of a mouse and the mouse you can that is the size, but you can you know by dragging it only the width if you reduce the animal may look leaner or if you stretch it, it may look fatter right. So, this is not the correct you know display right. So, that is what is shown on the top there is a circle and if you make it you know you know thinner then it becomes oval shaped and if you stretch it again it becomes oval shaped, but in the other side. So, you have to when you make the size smaller you have to make sure that it is you know the proportion is maintained therefore, it the relative features of the image is always you know maintained that way it is very extremely important because that is how you know all these images you know they represent what you have seen right, but it could be much smaller than what you have seen, but the relative this you know points in that uh, any uh, section of that image should not vary it should be proportionally smaller or proportionally uh, bigger. The other aspect you have to look at is that when you have a image when you are processing you are allowed to do the you know uh, enhancement of the image that is you can do overall you know you can bring more contrast or reduce the contrast that is allowed right because you know you have the same image if you have taken with a longer exposure it the image may look different if you use a shorter exposure the image may look different. For example, you can use your cell phone take an image in the in noon and then in the night then they look very different right same object may be look very different depending on how much light intensity that is there in the object that you are seeing. But you can do you know even an image that you have obtained in the night you can open it in any image processing software you can make it you know much brighter right. But when you do that you do it to the overall image right you are not changing any particular you know section of the image uh, you know you are not altering it. So, that is so overall if you apply any contrast enhancement it is ok you know, but you cannot uh, do that only for certain regions. So, what is shown here is that you know some image which is manipulated meaning you can see that on the right hand side that uh, lower corner on the image identical image shown on the right side with a red circle that these dots are removed using some image uh, processing software. What you need to remember is that any image that you manipulate it can be easily identified because these are all digital images the way you make it the way you can also find what you have done. So, if you think that you are smart that you are able to you know make the change and send it and there is a similarly smart way to look at whether any such manipulation is done or not quickly people will find out. Therefore, you want to be careful you do not want to do such kind of a manipulation right. There are other ethics present images for publication for example, if you have gel images right. So, you have two different gels and you have gotten the images now you want to combine them together because they are represent say different time codes or whatever. Now, you need to you know identify that they represent two different you know gel image. So, what is shown here is that there is a line that is shown and line inserted there is an arrow and then and then there is a text written that is to show that the image on the left is different from the image on the right side they are not done at the same time that is what identified by the line. So, spliced together lanes of gels must be separated by a thin black line therefore, you know that they are not from the same uh, you know gel and it should be set so in the legend as well you cannot hide that information. And second if you may have an image for example, I have taken a microscopic image of you know various organisms that are there and that like one shown here in the, you know, the spherical objects. Now, one of that spherical object I want to blow it make it bigger and then show it there. So, if I am doing that so I should demarcate that particular you know section of the image by a line therefore, I know that this is not the same as part of the rest of the group it is a different you know you have either you have magnified or you brought something from elsewhere and you are putting here again that kind of a you know line should be drawn to show that these two are not of the same magnification or same field and so on. It is very very important when you make a composite images you have to identify such image corrections right it is important you need to show that.